The representative. Oh! 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 We have a prayer to react upon. Apparently, this prayer was made during the Congress meeting, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, the prayer was basically uh, not Christian like. Uh, and so, and who did they ask to make the prayer? A Methodist. Now, not throwing shit at Methodist, but. Um, that was not a Christian prayer, if you actually know what Christian prayer looks like and sounds like. But that was kind of, and I kind of, I did feel bad because this is supposed to be the people that follow Jesus Christ, and but, but actually are not, and they are supposed to be the one, the Christian groups but they are not and so I saw that video and I wanted, to, I wanted to actually react to that to that because it's very important to enlighten people about who we call Christian and who actually are Christian so let's get in <laughs> I think this is the guy right here. Hmm. Pursuant to the 20th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States, for the meeting of the 117th Congress of the United States, the House will come to order. The prayer will be offered by Reverend Emmanuel Cleaver, St. James United Methodist Church, Kansas City, Missouri. Okay, so the, the person is from the United Methodist Church in Kansas City, by the way. The Methodist Church is being divided because of um, religious beliefs. They're trying to have, I think it's a, a, a homosexual or something like that to become the, the head of the church. Something weird is going on between them. And uh, that's just what, I don't know if, that's, if that already happened, but last time I checked they were in conflict with each other because of the the biblical views that differ that differ between the two of them and uh, well now we have a Methodist I guess um, person that is going to be given the prayer and so I kind of wonder what kind of prayer he is going to be given so Let's actually take a listen to his prayer real quick. Let's pray. Eternal God, noiselessly, we bow before your throne of grace as we leave behind. Hold on. Um. Eternal God, did you say noiselessly? Because I couldn't, I guess even the thing couldn't pick up what he was saying. Um, if any of you know what he just said after Eternal God, please, can you put it on the comment below? Um, because I would like to know exactly what that is that he just talked about. Because that doesn't sound like something, and that sounds weird. Hmm... 
But you know what? Let's actually let, let's actually go. Let's let, let's keep going to see exactly because just at the beginning, I'm not quite sure exactly who he's praying to. But I'm gonna give the the benefit of the doubt that he's praying to the God of heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But let's keep on going. <laughs> politically and socially clamorous year of 2020. We gather now in this consequential chamber to inaugurate another chapter in our roller coaster representative government. The members of this august body acknowledge your sacred supremacy and therefore confess that without your favor and forbearance, we enter this new year relying dangerously on our own fallible nature. God, at a moment when many believe that the bright light of democracy is beginning to dim, empower us with an extra dose of commitment to its principles. May we of the 117th Congress refuel the lamp of liberty so brimful that generations unborn will witness its undying flame. And may we model community healing control our tribal tendencies, and quicken our spirit that we may feel thy priestly presence even in moments of heightened disagreement. May we so feel your presence that our service here may not be soiled by any utterances or acts unworthy of this high office. Insert in our spirit a light so bright that we can see ourselves in our politics as we really are soiled by selfishness, perverted by prejudice and inveigled by ideology. Now may the God who created the world and everything in it bless us and keep us. May the Lord make... Okay, so we just found out that, okay, so I, apparently he's speaking to the God of heaven uh, because he said the God that created, I think he said created everything, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give him the better and the benefit of the doubt that he is praying to my God, which I know, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, I'm gonna assume that for it is, but you know, let's keep on going to see what we're gonna find next. His face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up the light of His countenance upon us and give us peace. Peace in our families, peace across this land, and dare I ask, O oh Lord, peace even in this chamber, now and evermore. We ask it in the name of the monotheistic God, Brahma, and... Wait, okay, ha, hold on. Oh! Ha, 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 ha. Oh, yeah. Um, excuse me, um, you don't have to say monotheistic God, if it's the God of, that I know, he's already monotheistic, but actually, is he talking about that God? Because he said something, uh, let me actually, okay, did he say Brahma or Brahma? Hold on, let me do a quick search. Let me do a quick search on that God, because I actually I don't know if he's talking about something or something else. I'm assuming he said Brahma or Brahma. I see Brahma God. Oh, he is. Okay, that makes sense now. So, people, be careful who you ask to pray. You see, when he said, that's why I was confused when he said monotheistic God, because if he says, if he is the God of to whom the heaven, then he's already monotheistic. Why then should you say monotheistic God? But no, because he added to it Brahma. Oh, so let me see. 
So Brahma actually is, in Hindu, is the Lord of creation. Now, I'm not, I'm not against whatever Hindus believe. I don't care what they believe. Well, not that I don't care, but it's their beliefs. I'm okay with that. They choose to believe in that. That's fine. But if you come and be talking as a, you are a Christian and you're praying to a Hindu God, then you are a heathen. So what is Lord Brahma? Well, apparently in Hindu is a lot of creation. And as you can see, it has, uh, it looks like a statue to me, not really a God. Let's see. So, you know, actually, let me actually make it bigger, actually. Let me make it this bigger. Okay, you guys can see this. So, um, that is from January 24th, 2019. Hinduism perceives the whole creation and its cosmic activity as, a, as the work of three fundamental forces symbolized by three gods which constitute the Hindu trinity or trimute. Chaimurti, Brahma, the creator, Vishnu, the sustainer, and Shiva, the destroyer. Okay, so this is not a monotheistic god. So first thing he said, monotheistic god, and then he said, Brahma. No, Brahma is not a monotheistic god. It's a polyistic, polyistic god. Because if it's, a, it's symbolized by three gods, my god is one god, not three gods, because they all work together. None of them is is superior or, the, or above the other one. They're all, when it comes to creating, they're all the same. They think alike. They act alike. Yes, they do have their they do have their differences when it comes to the status, but they are basically in union. It's not as though. God the Father is here, and then God the Son is somewhere else, and the, and the Holy Spirit is somewhere else, and then they have three different universes, and they have two different thrones, and they, they, try, they try to merge together. No, they all sit in the same throne. They're all together. They're not three gods. They're one God that have that are three distinct individuals, if you put it that way. This one, he said there are three gods. No, that is not a monotheistic god, that's a polyistic god. So, let's see. He says, Brahma, the creator of the universe and of all beings as depicted in the Hindu cosmology, the Vedas, the oldest and the holiest of Hindu scriptures, are attributed to Brahma, and thus Brahma is regarded as the father of Dharma, he is not to be confused with Brahman, which is the general term for the supreme being of Almighty God. Although Brahma is one of the Trinity, his popularity is no match to that of Vishnu and Shiva. Brahma is to be found to exist more in scripture than in homes and temples. In fact, what? Okay, that's already giving me a headache. Anyways, let me get back to the video again. So, at least now we know. At least now we know. This is not the God that he is speaking to. This God he is speaking to is not the one that I know. And, I mean, if you are a Christian, it is not the one that you know as well. Because he just mentioned it. It's the monotheistic God, Brahma. And, and if you are paying attention, if you're not listening attentively, you're going to fall for it that he's speaking to the God of heaven, when in reality he's speaking to a different God. Now, I don't know if the Hindu God is the same thing as my God. I don't think it is. Um, but if that's what they believe in, then that's, that's okay. But to have the name Christian and then be praying to a Hindu god, that makes no sense to me. First of all, 
this God that he's praying to is a statue. And my God does not like statue. So I'm not too sure exactly what Christian part of him has to do with Hindu. But you know what? I don't know. Let's just get to see what else we're going to talk about. So, so far we know he's not talking about the God of Heaven. He's talking about some other God that, or other gods. Known by many names, by many different faiths. We ask it in the name of the monotheistic God, Brahma, and God known by many names, by many different faiths. A man and a woman. Oh! The representative... to pray let's see this is how jesus actually uh give us an example okay to pray in a sense we pray to the father in heaven okay like dear father or our father in heaven eternal father or eternal god that's all that's okay and as you keep praying you know and but really when he what he says is he says that in in john 17 in other parts in Matthew chapter in Matthew as well he says when you pray you pray to the Father and whatever you ask in my name it shall be given to you and so when we pray we pray to the Father in heaven in the name of Jesus Christ okay and uh, and um, but we already know that he is not praying to my God because he said this God is known by many names and many faiths. That's not true uh, because there are many faiths and they don't believe in the God of heaven. They believe in some, on some other things. So that's, that one is already debunked. But when you finish a prayer, um, it's, uh, it, me it, it basically is, Father, I pray to you in Jesus' name. And we, we, we finish as, let it be so. Let it be so. Okay, let it be, let it be so means amen. Amen simply means let it be so, according to your will. Okay? But this guy... <laughs> I don't know if he's trying to be politically correct. <laughs> but this guy... said a man and a woman <laughs> hold on hold on hold on hold on how do you how wait I, I'm, I'm okay now I'm confused how do you who how do you end a prayer with a man and a woman. 
I mean, even what? So hold on, are these the people that are now gonna be governing us in this country? Okay, first of all, don't ever tell me that this country is a Christian nation. It is not. Okay, it's not. And no, it's not because if we get a so-called Christian with the label of Christianity on him who is a Methodist guy, if he, first of all, is praying to Brahma, which is a Hindu God, not the Christian God, that's the first problem. Second problem, how in the world do you end a prayer with a man and a woman? What does, I don't, like, what does that mean? A man and a woman. What does that mean? What does that mean? Is it, I would have to ask him, is this a political um, prayer so you can fit everyone in? Or are you praying to God? Because at the end of the day, if you call yourself a Christian, which I don't believe he is at all, how do you go and pray and finish a man and a woman? That is, that is a next level of stupidity in this country when it comes to Christianity. That is the level of stupidity and this is unacceptable. I don't think any true Christian would ever be okay with that kind of prayer right here. Don't think so. But guys, you know, um, please, you can put the... That's the end of the prayer, actually. That's what I, got, I was going to cover, is just the prayer. And um, But I'm going to put the link down below so you can watch the whole thing if you want. Which I'm not going to do. Uh, because I, I only wanted to look at the prayer part because that's the most essential part to me. Um, but please let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe on my YouTube, on my YouTube channel. And leave some comments below to, to, know, to tell me how do you feel about that prayer. If you're a Christian, did he finish the right way? A man and a woman. I just can't believe that part actually. Anyways guys, that was Mother Michelle. I hope to see you guys again. Until then, Mother out.